Welcome as we gather on this Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. I want to share a few reminders with you. First, I want to let you know that we do have services throughout Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, this Thursday, on Good Friday, which is this Friday. And again, we have them on Easter Sunday as well, which is the culmination of, of Holy Week and the fulfillment of God's promises. All of these services will be available online. And if you get our email updates, you should see the email updates. Otherwise, simply go to our website and you can find them there. And so may the Lord bless your worship this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your King comes to you. O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon a donkey. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God our Father, who is faith and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins before God our Father. Gracious Lord, on this Palm Sunday, remember your people who cry out to you, save us. 
our own mouths testify against us. And we are still in need of your grace and mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We've sinned against you in our thoughts and what we have said and both what we've done and failed to do. Our sin against you is our fault. Only our fault and entirely our fault. But your word says that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Oh God, we pray to you, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, remove our guilt, and lead us to everlasting life in you. God, in his gracious and steadfast love, forgives all our sins for the sake of his Son. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Savior, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and die. Let these palm crosses be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we proclaim our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please feel free to join me or listen along. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Gospel reading on this Palm Sunday comes from the Gospel of Mark, beginning in chapter 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is our Gospel reading. of praise to you. 
to you now high exalted our melody Today we are turning for the last time to our look at the prayers of the Old Testament. And as we do so, we're turning to the book of Habakkuk. But before we do that, let's begin with a prayer. Almighty God, you are the creator of all things and you are the giver of life. As we stand at the beginning of another Holy Week, I pray that you would remind us of the purpose for which Jesus was sent. And as we look today at Habakkuk's conversation with you, Lord, I pray that you remind us that we too are invited to call upon you in all times and all circumstances. Use me, Lord, to proclaim your message to your glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. So I was doing a bit of research online and I came across a list and it was entitled Funny Questions with No Answers. And so I thought I'd share just a few of them with you today because what better place to share them than right here. So funny questions with no answers. The first one, it says, why do people say they slept like a baby when babies wake up every two hours? Good question, right? Or how about this one? Can you cry underwater? Uh, here's another one. Why does a round pizza come in a square box? And they do. There's never a round box, is there? It's probably hard to make a round box, I suppose. Uh, here's a good one. I, I thought about this one. Made me scratch my head. Why do toasters always have a setting that burns the toast to a crisp? It's true, isn't it? They always have that, but why do they put it there? Uh, how about this one? If vegetable oil is made from vegetables and olive oil is made from olives, what is baby oil made from? Here's a last one. I thought this was maybe the best of them all. The question is this, how is it possible that we put a person on the moon before we figured out that it would be a good idea to put wheels on luggage? Good question, right? Today, we're going to look at a prayer from an individual named Habakkuk. Habakkuk was a prophet, and that means he was a messenger for God. Now you might think that being God's messenger meant that Habakkuk had all the answers, but that just wasn't the case. Habakkuk had questions himself. And he actually had a lot of questions, specifically for God. So let me share a few of these questions with you. They're right away in the book of Habakkuk. It's chapter one. I'm gonna pick up in verse two. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. Habakkuk was living in a time when evil seemed to be winning in the world. Worse yet, it seemed like God was inactive, inattentive, and indifferent to what was going on. And so in response to what he saw, Habakkuk asked questions like, where is justice in the world? Why do bad people prosper? Or why do good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? And as I look at it and I think about 
Habakkuk's questions, I realize that they sound an awful lot like the questions that we struggle with too. God answered Habakkuk's question. Two words sum up God's answer to these questions that Habakkuk had. The first word is wait. That's the first word that sums up God's answer, it's wait. I was thinking about that word and I realized it can be difficult to wait. For example, I'm guessing that none of you have ever said to yourself, oh great, the line at the store is really long today. I was hoping to have to stand and wait for a while. And I also suspect that none of you have said to yourself, nice traffic today. I'm looking forward to spending the next hour in my car going a half a mile. As I was thinking about waiting, you know, it struck me that the COVID pandemic has been a, well, a constant reminder of just how hard it can be for us to wait. Now, in the case of Habakkuk, he wanted God to act at that very moment. He didn't want any more delays. Uh, again, I want to share from the book of Habakkuk, this time from chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And I want you to listen for his desire for action. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it, for there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. And so to Habakkuk's desire for action, God says, wait. Be patient. Even if it seems like things are moving slowly, or maybe not at all, be confident that everything is happening according to my plan, says God. Today, we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. This day is known as Palm Sunday. And it's known as that because Jesus was welcomed into the city by a crowd waving palms. Later in in that same week, Jesus would be arrested and tried and ultimately crucified. After Jesus died on the cross, his disciples must have questioned and wondered about how God's plan could have gone so, so wrong. But God's plan hadn't gone wrong. It had gone perfectly. Even when it seemed like everything was out of control, God was still at work. The disciples simply needed to wait to see the results of what God had done for them, for us, through the cross. There are times, if we're honest, Yourself. when we are just like Habakkuk wanting God to act right now to bring a sense of justice and fairness to the world but God has already acted through the cross and God will continue to act out of love for us. God's reminder for us is to wait and be confident that God is still at work. The first word that sums up God's answer here is, is wait. But there's a second word as well that sums up God's answer to Habakkuk. 
And the word that God uses to answer his question is faith. It's the word faith. I want to share with you Habakkuk 2 verse 4. And I want you to listen for the word faith. It appears at the end. It's God speaking. God says, look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. I don't know if you saw it or not, but the news recently interviewed a couple who've been married for 70 years. The reporter asked the wife if she had ever considered divorce over their 70 years of marriage. She responded to the question quickly and said, divorce, never. Murder, often. I got a kick out of that. The couple had their battles and differences, of course, was the answer and the reality. But they were still together. This is faith. That's faith. Did you know that faith and faithfulness are the same thing in the Bible? I want to share verse 4 again with you, but this time from a different translation. So it's a different English translation of the Bible. It says this, You see, anyone whose heart is not upright will succumb, but the upright will live through faithfulness. Faith or faithfulness in this verse is more than a one-time event. It means to go on believing continuously. Faithfulness means to cling to God's promises. Even when everything seems to be going wrong, as it seemed to Habakkuk. And when I think of faithfulness, I have to tell you, I immediately think about Jesus. Specifically, I think about how Jesus remained faithful to God. Jesus' faithfulness can be seen in his life, his suffering, and his death on the cross. And because he was faithful, we have someone in whom we can place our faith. May God, who sent Jesus as the ultimate answer to our questions, Bless and keep you. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come before you today reminded that we so often have questions. We struggle with the same questions that Habakkuk did. But Lord, you remind us the importance of waiting, knowing that you are at work and you have worked through your son, Jesus Christ, to bring us life. Strengthen and keep us in this good news today and forever in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you, to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. We pray this in your name. You are Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And yet he comes, the children cheer, with palms his path is strong. With every step the cross draws near, the King of glory's throne. A stride of cold he passes by, as loud hoes and or else the very stones would cry, Behold, behold your King. What fading clouds his road adorn, The palms I'll soon lay down. No bloom or leaf but thorn thorn the King of the soldiers mock the rabble cries, the streets with the mock ring. As Pilate to the mob replies, Behold, behold your king. Go today with the blessing of God. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. May the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen.